I could give a very long speech, but I'm not going to. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not going to recite Casey at the bat either. <laughs> Pretty good. Okay. <laughs> you know, you, we all know Mr. Shin, so there's no need really to go into great depth and talk about his career. I hope you've all read his book, Eyewitness to History, and probably heard a lot about him. You know, he was really destined to be a teacher. He grew up as a farm boy on a very isolated and primitive farm, very primitive from our point of view, where horsepower was really supplied by horses, <laughs> but it wasn't running water or electricity. And where he saw that there were only two occupations that appeared on his horizon. One was to be a farmer, and one was to be a teacher. He made the right choice. Destiny guided him, and he became a teacher. And at the age of 19, tender age of 19, after already having completed two years of normal school, he became a teacher in a miserable log cabin, one-room schoolhouse in Dixie. And after a year there, we, I think he had seven or nine students, he became, the one, he became a teacher in the one-room school in Melrose. If you put a map of Idaho in front of me, I couldn't locate either of those towns. <laughs> but he was rescued from this obscurity in the boondocks by World War II and went into the submarine service in the Navy. And he's written a book about that, which was held up to some of you. But returned from that and then to the benefit of the GI Bill, he completed his baccalaureate degree at Wisconsin, uh, with Washington State University. And then by a kind of haphazard convocation of circumstances, he became the chemistry teacher at Lewiston High School. <laughs> so he became a teacher, and that's the way most of us here knew him as a teacher of chemistry, if you did that, or if you were in the debate team. I don't know if there's anybody here besides me and Paul Stewart who's on the debate team. But that's how most of us had a direct experience with Mr. Shin. Now, if you were in his chemistry class, you know that the chemistry suite consisted of three rooms, three elements. In the front room, there was the classroom. In the back, there was the laboratory. In the middle was Mr. Shin's office and the storage area and so forth. And each one of those three elements played a particular part. In the classroom, there was a kind of a big contract, a lab, kind of a laboratory table, I don't know what you call it. But you walked in, and Mr. Shin was ready to teach. He'd get up on that platform, sit on it, facing the class, with his feet dangling down, and start talking. And his talk was extremely entertaining. He would talk about atoms getting together, and forming combinations, and falling apart, and what atoms overpowered each other, and the valences of the periodic table, and so forth. And it did so in a very easygoing, entertaining kind of way. And he made a human story out of these things. I mean, the atoms getting together was sort of like a dating club. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing sort of thing. And the atmosphere was always so easygoing, so cheerful, so, so relaxed. And, but at the same time, everything was so clearly presented. Everything was so crystal clear. Everything was so understandable. And it was so rigorous that we really understood things. We didn't just memorize valences and, and chemical formulas and so forth. Mr. Shin presented things in a way so we saw it as a system. We understand the fundamentals. We understood the processes. All these things came together in that classroom. And the classroom was always an order. Uh, everybody enjoyed being there. Mr. Shin, in all the years that he taught in that classroom, never sent a single student to detention. <laughs> but the real core of Mr. Shin's teaching was in that middle area. And after school, people crowded in there and talked and talked. It was a Shin cl fan club. And we had the most amazing discussions. And anything could come up, not just chemistry, but politics, current events, personal problems, whatever else. Mr. Shin did not just teach people how to chemistry, he taught them how to be better people. And, you know, and just in a personal experience, you know, I would sit in Mr. Shin's office over and over again, hour after hour, and we'd talk and so forth, and he would catch me up, he would show me where I was making mistakes or something of that sort, and he led me, you know, he didn't lecture me, he led me on to 
get, get better understanding, get better perspective. <laughs> and now I call up Mr. Shiv and we discuss everything under the sun. And after he's had enough of talking with me for an hour or so, he says, well, I guess we've solved all the problems in the world and I know it's time to let him go. <laughs> he went on to become director of uh, vocational and technical education at the college. He was teaching other teachers to, to improve the lives of their students. And he was able, through these intermediaries, to turn out all kinds of skilled tradesmen, welders, carpenters, <coughs> plumbers, electricians, mechanics, whatever else, and create a role for them as stable, solid citizens. You know, he also became a great traveler. And if you ever had the joy of reading his travel reports, you know, they're not just a list of, we stayed here, we stayed here, we saw this, we saw this, we saw that. He did research before every one of his travels, and then, was, invested, was an investigative reporter in each one of them. And when he wrote up these reports, they were instruct, they were not only entertaining, but they were instructed, he taught something. He was a teacher, he's teaching, teaching, teaching all the time. You know, in later life, he, uh, he has been the guiding spirit for many years of the Nias First County Historical Society. I hope you are members, I hope you've been reading that golden age, it's periodical that he comes out with, and you, perhaps don't realize how much of that, as editor, he is actually composed and written. Many of you know that I spent a lot of time in China and getting to know Chinese people, things of that sort. And I've been to China, I have a lot of Chinese friends, Chinese students, Chinese professors. There are a number of people in China who know a lot about Mr. Shin. <laughs> <laughs> and the problem is, how can I describe Mr. Shin to a foreign audience like that and make sense of it? And I've struggled with this. How am I going to make them understand Mr. Shiv? Well, something occurred to me. You know, in Chinese society, veneration of teachers and veneration of ancestors is the basis of everything. And it occurred to me in a way that I had not only, perhaps only dimly realized previously, but finally it came to the fore and I became conscious of so that I could express, express it. So I said, Mr. Shin was and is my third parent. <laughs> that even when my parents were still alive, I was coming to Mr. Shin in the same way that I would come to my parents. I would talk to him in the same way. He would give me the same kind of counsel. He, would, he was my third parent. And finally, I was able to recognize that fully in explaining this to these Chinese students and his Chinese professors, the essence of a Confucian teacher is to make people better. We've all become better. Anybody that Mr. Shin has touched, whether actually in the classroom or uh, in discussion, in daily living or anything like that, his touch has been on us and has made people better. That, one of the ways that we can recognize that and honor him, perhaps the best we can do, is to invite him to join us and become an honorary member of the Lewiston Senior High School class of 1958. <laughs> Mr. Shin, will you accept this invitation? Thank you, thank you. Please rise. <laughs> will the uh, other uh, helpers come up and help garb Mr. Shin with the uh, academic <laughs>
we've got it all completely backwards. You honor us by joining our class. <laughs> and by joining us, by inviting a member of men of your qualities, of your distinction, to become a member of our class, you add class to our class, you make our class more classy, you give a touch of class to our class. <laughs> furthermore, furthermore, I must say that although you're now a member of our class, you still stand apart in important ways. Because, Mr. Shin, you are, you always have been, and you always will be in a class by yourself. some things. Maybe uh, that's where I learned. Uh, this, this was a spot. The, the, the gold mine was, was coming and uh, the, the whiteboard workers were going past. I didn't end with a single student I started with. The ki a French kid would arrive and I'd say, what, what grade were you in? I was in such and such a grade and I'd get a book and I'd say, can you read it? Uh, and, and then that, that, ch that child would read it or not and we'd find out what their needs were. I learned a lot in that school. I learned a whole of a lot in that school. I learned patience. Another thing I learned was that every individual has a different need. And that, that uh, the most important thing I learned in all my business of education is don't try to pop, put them all in the same box. We all have a need, and this is why I, I played two hands. You remember, I read vocational at night, and I read chemistry in the daytime, and debate in the middle. We, it was a ball. We had a ball. We, we, I have lots of memories. Enormous numbers of memories. And we went around and talked to you people today. Each one of you would tell me a different story. Mm -hmm. I said, what's the veil of the bromine? And did you know nobody could tell me? That's because the important things is we were teaching people. I, instead of, I was teaching people chemistry. I wasn't teaching chemistry to people because people are the most important. And so, you little kids, grew up your big kids. <laughs> I enjoyed it, you enjoyed it. And it has been a wonderful life. Life has been good to me. Thank you for your attention. Thank <laughs> you.